What is up everyone? My name is Rakari and I'm the community manager for Killer Instinct. Today we're going to talk to you briefly about what's in store for our latest content update, 3.7, which releases on March 14th. Before we jump into what's new, let me remind you all that the Ultimate Master Pack, which features finishers for Thunder, Jago, TJ Combo, Maya, and Tusk, is available for free, so pop on into KI and download it now. Gold Skin Pack 3, which features skins for Glacius, Sidira, and Mira, and the aptly named Gold Skin Pack 4, with skins for Kanra, Spinal, and Hisako, start releasing later this month. Keep an eye out for a more detailed look at these skins in action in the coming weeks. If you've been paying any attention to our Twitter feed, forums, or the internet at all in the last couple of weeks, you will have noticed that we revealed our latest character coming to Killer Instinct, Shin Hisako. Shin Hisako will be available for purchase starting on March 21st, but we have a very special opportunity for you. During the week of March 14th, we'll be giving you a special look at Shin Hisako on the Killer Instinct Beam channel. For that week, you'll be able to play as Shin Hisako, and should you defeat Gargos and Shadow Lords, we'll unlock her before her scheduled release date. More details on that front will be coming soon, so be on the lookout for that info. All right, with the news out of the way, let's go over the patch notes. Keep in mind that we're only gonna go over the changes to characters, specific bug fixes can be found on our website. So with that, first up is Shadow Lords. There are now four new story missions for Tusk, Kilgore has finally been added to the Mimic Pool, and there is an increased chance for getting dossiers throughout all of Shadow Lords. That's it, Shadow Lords is done. Now on to the character specific stuff. There are no big system changes to talk about, so let's start with Jago. Light Wind Kick is now minus four on block. Medium Wind Kick is now minus six on block. Heavy Wind Kick is now minus 11 on block. Double Roundhouse is now plus two on block. Net Cutter now hits on frame 22 and has a slight range reduction. Endokukin damage has been reduced by 20%. Big Endokukin damage has been reduced by 20%. Shadow Wind Kick is now minus one on block. That's all for Jago, so let's talk about Glacius. Ice Lance is now minus four. Crouching Heavy Kick is now minus five. Standing Heavy Punch is now minus four. Standing Heavy Kick is now minus five. Heavy Puddle Punch inflicts two less frames of block stun so that canceling it into Shadow Hail behaves like the light and medium versions. We are all done with Glacius, so next we're going to talk about Orchid. We've adjusted Flick Flack so that in Juggles, you cannot use this move back to back without inserting manuals in between. We lowered the opener each Nissan damage by 5%. We raised the opener Flick Flack damage by 10%. We raised the opener Slide Kick damage by 25%. All right, with Orchid out of the way, let's talk about Spinal. The startup of Shadow Bone Shaker is now projectile immune. Shadow Bone Shaker now loses its projectile invulnerability after its active frames have ended. We've added the missing hitboxes to the startup of the linker version of Shadow Bone Shaker. That's all for Spinal, next up is Fulgore. Fulgore can no longer pip cancel eye lasers into plasma bolts. Next up is Maya. We've adjusted her tumble kick so that in juggles you cannot move this move back to back without inserting manuals between, just like Orchid. We've reduced her opener tumble kick damage by 10%. Double dagger damage has been reduced by 33%. Mantis damage dealt has been reduced by 50% in combos. We've also significantly increased the damage dealt by the dagger assault ender up front so that it deals just slightly less than the exchange launcher ender. Next up is Khan Ra. We've decreased the amount of potential damage inflicted to himself from Sand Explosion by 50%. We've also reduced the pushback on Swarm Linkers. Next up, let's look at Ripter. All Shoulder Charge Enders are now zero on hits mid-screen. She's out of the way, we're done with her. Next up is Gargos. We've changed the frame on which Gargos can cancel his dash early into a special move from frame 18 to frame 24. We've decreased the opener Izuna drop damage by 28%, and we've also removed the hard knockdown from opener Izuna drop. That's all for Gargos, let's look at General Rom. We've reduced the cost of Krill attack cancel from one meter to half a meter. You'll notice that when you have at least half a meter, just a few Krill will appear around Rom's legs to let you know you have enough meter to perform a Krill attack cancel. Idol. 
Idol's shoulder ender is now zero on block mid-screen. And the big kahuna having just released in the last patch is Kilgore. Kilgore's potential damage output has been reduced by about 60%. We've increased self-damage when performing dodge and overheat from 5 points to 24 points. We're reducing the overheat time to 12 seconds. We've made sweep count as an opener so combos performed off of off-the-ground hits become breakable as expected. We've reduced the chance that standing heavy punch bullets would whiff standing opponents. We've also made it possible to break the shadow metal ball and opener ender combos. And missiles now auto destroy if not active during a match, preventing them from hitting between rounds. So that's gonna do it for character specific changes and that'll wrap up our patch notes video. For a full list of everything that's coming in 3.7, make sure to head on over to ultra-combo.com and leave us your feedback in the forums as well. We'll see you next time.